for specific uh, sections, there's a couple of tools. There's actually uh, three tools that you could use. Uh, the one that's easiest is called the quick selection tool. These are all on the toolbar on the left-hand side. So uh, a little bit further down, uh, the, the third, the fourth one down is called a quick selection tool. And if you hold your mouse down on that, you get uh, a selection of two different tools, the quick selection tool and something called the magic wand tool. Uh, the quick selection tool is great. You can set the actual size here, uh, uh, the, the, the pixel size. And what you do with it is you put the cursor on the area that you want to select. Uh, it, it's, it's great if you've got um, a, a definite uh, difference between your, the area you want to select and the rest of the picture. So if you have a straight horizon, like a, a, a starscape over uh, an ocean would be perfect because you've got a straight line going straight across the picture, and, and that would be perfect. Uh, the rocks here aren't bad because uh, although it's not, you wouldn't consider this a, a, a regular uh, shape, uh, it, it, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, city buildings are good because there's a lot of straight lines and not a whole lot of uh, undulations in, in the lines. Trees are really bad because trees, there's lots of space between leaves and and then also between branches there, there are spaces that you have to deal with. So. Uh, trees and, and hair are really bad. I took a, a intensive Photoshop class and I told the teacher what the kind of pictures that I was taking and I said I have, I have a problem with trying to select trees and he said trees are exactly like hair and he says that we, we've got an entire course just on selecting hair because uh, photographers in studios shoot pictures of, of, of models and then they uh, and then art directors will take the, the person off that background in Photoshop and then put another put them on another background but they have to select all of the hair and if you look at someone's hair there's lots of little strands of hair coming out depending on what your hair looks like there could be uh, big gaps be, uh, between hair and the, and the background so the, he said hair is, is, the, is the hardest thing to select in, in Photoshop just because it's so uh, irregular and, and almost random and, but uh, this a third party, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's there's methods in Photoshop that you can actually use to to find kind of fine tune your your selection. So the selection tool, you put your uh, you put your cursor um, on the area you want to select. You hold the mouse down, uh, and then you just move the tool along the essentially along the horizon that you want to select. Oops, all right, and that's selected too much. I'll let that work for a while. So it almost did it right. You said it was the better on the value of the pen. That's what, right? You can just set the better on the value of the selection. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's a uh, you you can select the size and and essentially the the hardness. So uh, oh. yeah. I mean, uh, I, I could set hard, yeah. I could set it at ten. Uh, Usually, ten, yeah, ten, ten's not bad. I, 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 I think this might have actually been the, um, uh, the default setting. So then uh, I enlarged the picture, and you can see that there, it didn't select this little area here. Uh, what, what you have to do now is you enlarge it, and you go along the uh, horizon area. And then it's um, uh, there's a couple different settings. The setting is on now is that it'll, it'll just select and add to the selection that you're doing. So if you if you pick this area, it'll just add to the to that selection. So I'll go along here and there's a little gap here. And it'll it'll choose that one. The left side it looks good. I'll skip the middle part for a second. And so the right side looks pretty good. So what I'll do is, uh, if you hold down the Alt or Option key, it'll go toward the minus, which means it'll subtract that uh, wh wherever you're clicking. So you could, you could try to subtract essentially the rock, and you you go along the edge, and this will take a little bit of time to work. So that the, the, the part that you selected is the sky, and you want to 
if there's any rock intruding, you want to subtract the rock from that selection, uh, which is what I'm doing right now. And I'll just subtract this here. So what key did you use to zoom into this thing? Uh, I'm using the wheel on the mouse to zoom in and zoom out. Uh, and then I'll, I'm holding down the Alt, or you can hold down the Option key on a Mac. And you're, uh, I'm subtracting just along the edge there, just to get the get the rock. If uh, if there's a if you don't uh, essentially select around the rock there, whatever change you make to the sky, it will make to the rock, and then sometimes. You'll, you'll see that there's this line that goes across that part of the picture, uh, which, is what, uh, which is what you don't want. Because you want to make it, uh, what am I doing here? You basically want to uh, adjust the picture so it looks like there hasn't been any adjustments made to the picture. Yeah, what you can do here is you can go to another tool, which is called the Lasso tool. And that's a freehand tool. You can, um, you can select any, you can just draw with your mouse. You hold the mouse down and, and you draw with it. And you can select it. Uh, when, when there's an irregular area like this, it often comes in handy. You could hold down the Shift key and that'll add to the selection. You could draw along the edge here. And then circle around here, and then that'll. Whoops, I did the wrong thing. I need to uh, track that one because we don't want the rock. So I could do that, and then that should remove the rock from there. So back on that. So we've got our uh, selection there. There's something also called select and mask. If you point at it, it'll it'll highlight. You could put different colors on there. That that I think the default is red. Uh, there's it's called select and mask. Hang on, I'll go back. Uh, at the very top, there's a uh, when you click on each of these tools on the toolbar, uh, there'll be different icons up here that'll tell you what the tool is doing. And this one it, it's it, it's set for just a adding a selection. Uh, you could set all these different parameters, um, the size, the hardness, the spacing. Uh, and then there will be uh, a, uh, a tab that says Select and Mask. And, th and that's right here. And that, that deals with just the selection that you just made um, for, for that particular picture. So if you click on that, it takes you to uh, a second page. The, uh, the area that you selected shows up in, re in red here. What I do here is... Um, I go to, it's called Global Refinements, and that's just something along the, the edge here. It, it, it might be closed, in which case you, you, you would see the right, uh, the right panel like that. You just open up Global Refinements. Under Feather, it's, it's, it'll be set to zero. Uh, I set it to, I usually set it to about two, which is, uh, which is two pixels. Uh, you could set it for more or less, usually that, that prevents a, a, a completely hard edge between your selection and what you, you didn't select. Uh, if you put a, uh, you can actually feather it quite a bit and make it basically a fuzzy line if you want. It, it really depends on the, on the subject matter. If you've got a horizon like this with, with rocks and sky, you don't want too much feathering because you, you, you don't want a completely hard edge. You just want a, um, a, a, a little bit that'll, uh, where, where you don't really show that you've, you've altered one section versus the other section. Uh, and that we could experiment with different things as well. So uh, I could open up curves now. And if I make a change in curves, it just affects the selection. It, it doesn't affect anything else. The, the rocks uh, don't change at all, just, just the sky changes. And, and so that's the great, the, the really good thing about selection. Uh, and it's, this is probably one of the more important things to know about uh, when you're working on uh, night sky pictures because you often need to uh, 
deal with say just the sky or just just the foreground, just your landscape, uh, independently from each other. And so this is how you could you could make a change, and uh, and just do the sky. So I could I could adjust my sky the, the way I want it without having to deal too much, but actually without having to deal at all with the um, the foreground. So I can increase the, the contrast a little bit, make a little bit of a, of a curve here. And, uh, and if you go Control or Command D, that deselects your selection. And so the, uh, if you zoom in, uh, I, I don't recommend zooming in more than I, I usually go to 100% just to check and make sure that there aren't any kind of strange things. Don't go over 100% because you, you'll never see your picture bigger than 100% if, if you think about that. And most of the time, you're, you're, you'll see your picture um, about this size on your, in relation to your computer screen. You're not, you're not really going to see it any much bigger. And at, at the resolution that this, uh, my camera is at and the screen, this is at 17%. Uh, it's a pretty big file, so uh, if, if your file, this is a 103 meg file, so if you, if you have a 50 meg file that your camera produces, then um, th this might be around the 34% range, but still, you're, you're not going to, you might not see anything bigger than that. Um, uh, Preston's got a question? Yeah, um, back to Instagram, sorry about that. No. Uh, could you pull that histogram back up for a second? Okay, well the histogram looks like this now. Yeah. Now, a couple of seconds ago, you showed that you had a ton of gap on the left side. Right. Why, why, what happened there? What I missed? Well, I've changed the, uh, essentially, I've changed the information in the picture. Okay. And so I've, I've, I've added some contrast. I've made the sky darker. And so that uh, whatever information uh, uh, created the, the peak on this side, is now pushed a little bit over to the to the left side. If this were coming out of the camera, I would reject the picture. I would say, well, that's that's too dark of a picture. Uh, what what I'm trying to do now is make the, make the image uh, both. I'm trying to remember the way I saw it in the sky, but also the way that I want to show this picture of these rocks from Rocky Mountain. And so, in in, in this case. Uh, the, other people might argue with me, but the, the histogram at this point, uh, you don't really need to pay attention to, sure. because you're not you're not trying to uh, get an exposure out of the camera. You're you're working on this file now in, in Photoshop, and you might be making it darker than it came out of the camera, which which is good. The the the, the better thing to do is to make to have to make it a little bit darker. Because uh, uh, if you've taken all the classes, I, I, I say that the, you, you can't really lighten anything in Photoshop. You're just a, uh, increasing the noise level. You're increasing the gain. And so if you can add contrast, if you can add some darkness, then you're essentially masking whatever noise that, that the digital camera is creating at these high ISOs and long exposure times that you're using. So just for my own sense of nomenclature here, that's not the histogram. The thing on the left is the histogram. The curves thing is the curves thing. <laughs> curves is curves. curves thing is a curve graph. What are we calling it? What's it? What are we calling it? This is called curves. Curves, yeah. okay. Yeah. Curves graph. Thing. Uh, you could call it. You could call it a graph because that's that's what it is. This is the histogram of the of the image in Photoshop. It's not the histogram that your camera created though. And so, uh, so the uh, uh, what you need to do is you need to ignore this. Because the, the, this is creating noise in your mind. And, and that, what you're, that's what's wrong. Yeah. No, what, what's happening is that, that a lot of people start paying attention to minute details, and they, they, don't see, they don't see the whole forest. They're not looking at their picture. They're looking at a graph. Well, and there's, the thing that also... And the question has come up before from other people, so you're not, you're not alone. Yeah. The thing that, that, that's confused me about where Yes. And if you're thinking of it as a, like I was as a histogram, no, you can't do that. You, you did a histogram once, and then, then you work on the, on the shot, right? 
Right. Preston's question is, is he's confused that, that with curves, I said you could do it multiple times, and he's saying, well, with the histogram, how, how can you do that? Again, ignore the histogram. Just completely ignore that because you're, you've, you introduce something in your mind that you don't want to do. And that what, what, uh, what you need to do is you need to concentrate on what the picture looks like. And then how, how use your, yeah, uh, as Preston points out, use your eyes. Uh, and so uh, most, you, you, you kind of get used to ignoring uh, the graph behind here. You, you see it initially. You, and, 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 and if, if you've got a good histogram from your camera, then it'll, then this will look good. Uh, and then you just go on with your work, and you you ignore what what this looks like, or what it'll become something much different than when you started out with. But but um, I think if you were, I think a lot of people might say, well, the histogram has to be a certain way for a certain kind of printing. Uh, but I, I have found that the, the 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 at least the people that are printing my pictures. Uh, say that the files are in really good shape and the color is good and the contrast and all that. So they said, well, you're doing, I said, well, I, I'm sort of, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. They said, well, you're doing something right because the, the output is great. And so, it, so, that, so that's what I'm looking at. So, uh, so just don't even think about the histogram anymore. I have lost my fear of curves now. Right. Uh, but, but curves is one of these uh, tools that are, it's a fantastic tool because you can do uh, so much in it. You can. Uh, I just showed you. You can do contrast. You can do uh, brightness levels. Uh, there's this uh, uh, a window here that says channel, and it says RGB. You pu pull that down to red. That's the red channel. You can increase the red. Uh, you can decrease the red. You can add. Essentially, you're adding cyan to to the picture. The opposite of red. Uh, you could do the same thing with green. You can increase. You can decrease the green. And do all sorts of, uh, of uh, color color adjustments uh, that way. Um, let's see. So I've I've done the sky. I could go back in my history to. I don't want to deselect. I want to have that. And then under uh, selection, there's something called inverse. So under select on the menu, uh, there's inverse. And what that does is invert the selection. So instead of the sky, now we got the rocks, and we could do the same thing. So if if the if I needed to make any adjustments in the rocks, I could I could do that. This just affects the rocks, as you can see. It doesn't affect the sky at all, uh, and I could do uh, brightness, contrast, all, all that stuff. And then I could do. I'll, I'll, so I'll just leave it alone for right now. <clears throat> 